Hey, good morning, church. Uh, let's stand up. Put our hands together a little bit this morning. Let's get some energy in the house. I'm casting my cares aside. I'm leaving my past behind. I'm setting my heart and mind on you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hand to yours. Believing there's so much more Knowing that all you have in store for me is good It's good Today is the day you have made I will rejoice and be glad in it Today is the day you have made And I will rejoice and be glad in it And I won't worry about you my doubts behind I'm giving my hopes and dreams to you Jesus I'm reaching my hand to yours believing there's so much more knowing that all you have in store for me is good so good today is the day you have made I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have me. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is the day you have me. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Foothills United Methodist Church, both in person and online. We're glad that you have joined us, and today is the day. Thank you, Witness, for getting us kicked off. And today is World Communion Sunday. So as you see on the table before you, we're focusing on the sacrament of Holy Communion as not only us gathering here as a congregation, uh, but brothers and sisters around the world coming to the table and sharing the bread and cup together. Let's take a few moments now, stand back up and say good morning and welcome each and every one.
Just a couple of announcements to keep you up to date on what's happening in the life of the church. First, we want to say thank you uh, to all of those who volunteered and helped out with our annual rummage sale, especially to Marion Faulkner. Marion, you're here, aren't you? Thank you. She coordinated all of it. It, it took a lot of people and hours, uh, but we raised over $5,000 for missions that we will uh, give uh, every penny to, to help those who are helping the community. So thank you for your efforts uh, with that. I also know there are a few leftover items in the parking lot next to King Hall. So if you are interested in taking something home, it's free. All you have to do <laughs> is haul it away. <laughs> Also, uh, if you uh, are interested in membership of the church, we've had some people who've been attending and who have not yet taken that step, uh, but you feel called to do so, we'll be receiving new members uh, next Sunday, October 9th, at either the 8.30 or 10.30 service. And if you're interested, please let me or Pastor Christy know, and we'll follow up with you on the next steps. Boots and Bling is happening. It's coming quickly. Uh, now that we're into October, our our big uh, dinner and auction, uh, and we really hope you'll be there. Many people have purchased their tickets already, but if you haven't, you can do so both in person after the service at the table or online, and we need for you to purchase them by October 14th because we have to have an accurate head count then. So if you haven't done so, go ahead and make that commitment, purchase your tickets, mark your calendar, also, if you have any gift cards you wish to donate for the silent auction baskets, we're receiving those as well, and we're going to have a fun time together. Also, uh, we have our time of, of fellowship following the service right on the patio. Uh, it's a gorgeous day to share some coffee or lemonade with one another, and uh, it is being hosted by our music programs. First service was Chancel Choir. Witness is the host for this Sunday. Come by and say thank you for your great music. <laughs> and seriously, if you have, you have this overwhelming desire to come up and sing, I'm sure Tim will be glad, happy to talk with you, very much so. And uh, let's take a moment now and uh, see where is Pastor Christy. Have you ever arrived somewhere and found a locked door? How did that make you feel? It wasn't very inviting, was it? I bet it caused you to pause and think, should I knock? Should I come back another time? We typically leave the doors open as a symbol of hospitality and welcome. It's just more inviting when people arrive and the doors are already open. So all you have to do is just walk on through as you enter God's sanctuary. Well, Jesus told a story about this one time. He said, once there was a friend who went to another friend's house at midnight, knocked on the door, and asked to borrow some bread to give to another friend who had arrived during the night. Well, the first friend was sort of angry about being awakened at midnight and said, go away, my door is already locked. Well, I'm sure the friend was still wondering what to do because it was very important to provide hospitality for guests. So in this story, Jesus says, if you ask, you will receive. If you knock, the door will be opened. We will come through a lot of doors in our faith journeys and in our lives. And I think this story teaches not to give up so easily. When we arrive to a closed door, yes, it may be uninviting and off-putting, and we may be tempted to turn away. 
But Jesus says, keep asking. Keep searching for those answers. Keep knocking. For if we keep knocking, the door will open and we will receive whatever we need. The Bible says, Whoever asks, receives, and whoever searches, finds, and whoever knocks on the door, the door will be opened. Sir Christie, great intro to uh, our scripture today and our sermon. Uh, if you are with uh, if you have children here with you and you wish to go to Kids Connect at this time, we, uh, you may get up and meet uh, Miss Lisa and our volunteers out front. And let us continue now in worship as Witness leads us in our next song. come to our time of worship where we bring God the prayers on our hearts. So we lift up the people in Cuba, Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina who were in the path of Hurricane Ian. We pray for the families who lost loved ones and for those who lost their homes and businesses. We lift up healing prayers for Martha Kogel, who was hospitalized this week, who drained fluid from her lungs. We also lift up Cindy Tesco upon the passing of her husband, William. We pray for their son, John, and his family as well as they grieve during this time. So let us open our hearts as witness leads us in this time of prayer.
consistent God. We come to you during this time of worship with many things on our hearts. The daily life stresses may pale in comparison to the world's suffering, but they are significant to us. We bring them with us into this place as we seek hope and peace. The world is in great need as it groans and hungers for your life-giving bread. The world knocks on your door, O Lord, and asks for your intervention. Bring us truly around your table this day as we proclaim unity in Christ. Remove our petty and hateful divisions so that we can be one in Christ. Move us to scooch in and make room for everyone around your table. The church is also in great need, O oh Lord. The church knocks on your door, asking and seeking your guidance and your intervention into the life of the church. We are discerning the next steps and are persistently knocking, asking, and seeking. We trust that you will open the doors for the next steps in the evolution of your church. This prayer today is a door that opens to your presence. We come to the door and you open it to everyone. We ask for what is on our hearts, yet you give us what we need. Reveal your Holy Spirit to us so that we will understand what we need. Help us to know the difference between what we want and what we need. Grow us into wanting what we need, which is you. Your loving, comforting presence satisfies our hungers and answers our questions. So during this time of silent prayer and meditation, our silent prayers are also doors that open to your presence. Each ask, each prayer is a knock on your door. God of perseverance, thank you for opening the door to us. Thank you for being gentle to the suffering. Thank you for holding us accountable when we only focus on our selfish desires. Thank you for not being a God who gives snakes and scorpions, but a loving God who gives us what we need. We lift our voices together as one church now as we sing together the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in 
Good morning. The scripture today is from Luke 11, verses 1 through 13. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught the disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of the God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, let the words of my mouth and meditations of all of those gathered together be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. We are continuing our sermon series on parables, specifically the parables that are found in the Gospel of Luke. And last week you heard how we started with a very familiar parable, the parable of the Good Samaritan. But today, today is a little bit different because this one is small, tiny even, and it's hidden away in a passage that's about prayer. So let's start there. At the beginning of chapter 11 in Luke, Jesus is gathered with his disciples and He's teaching them how to pray. And it is in this passage that uh, you heard Althea read that we have that very familiar prayer now, the, the daily prayer of Christians known as the Lord's Prayer. This is where it comes from. And it's a short prayer, but it covers many things. First, it recognizes God as our creator, and the sustainer of all life. It's a prayer that asks God to provide for us our daily bread, and that is both physical in terms of provisions to sustain us physically, but also spiritually as well. It asks God for forgiveness, forgiveness for us when we sin against others, and forgiveness for others when they sin against us. A two-way street, both ways. It asks God to guide us in our daily lives and how we act and live out our faith, to avoid temptation and evil, to make choices that lead us to spiritual health and wholeness. And we conclude the prayer with a plea that God will guide us in our lives and to help us to realize the reign of God 
in this world as it is in heaven. And the amazing thing to me is, from this scripture on, over 2,000 years, this prayer is still a part of every church's liturgy for every Christian as we lift it up daily. Well, after Jesus gives the actual prayer to his disciples, he makes a transition. He switches from what we pray for to the act of praying itself. And here's this tiny parable. This is where it comes in. He tells this story about a man who gets up out of his own home and bed and goes to a friend's house at midnight and knocks at the door. And I'm sure he knocked more than once, loudly. Until his friend arises from his bed and answers the door, and the man says, I need your help. I need three loaves of bread. Now, mind you, the three loaves of bread is not for the man and his family, but it's for a guest, for someone who has arrived at his home unexpectedly. And in that culture, it was paramount that you provided hospitality to whomever needed it. So the man didn't have bread to give him, so what did he do? He got up and went to his friend's house to get the bread to provide hospitality. Now, in the parable, you heard the man's reaction, right? Um, I can easily picture myself saying this. Do not bother me. Do not bother me. The door has been locked. My children are all asleep. Basically, don't you realize what time it is? I cannot give you anything. But here's here's the rub. The man doesn't give up. Jesus says that he keeps asking. He keeps knocking. He says, I need this bread. And he ask for it until he receives it and then takes it back to his home to feed his guest. So this parable has a central theme and the theme is persistence or perseverance. And Jesus is teaching his followers to not give up. That when they face setbacks in their lives and in their ministry, Do not give up. (laughs) George Thorogood has joined witness today. (laughs) Just because a prayer is not answered, my friends, immediately doesn't mean that you should stop asking. That when you have a need, we're encouraged to persevere. Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who searches, finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Jesus is teaching us that prayer itself is a discipline. And a discipline means something that you repeat over and over and over. That we're always knocking on doors and asking and searching as part of our faith. Now, you and I both know that we lift up prayers and often we feel those prayers go unanswered. But God continues to instruct us to pray. And I think it's because of this. The act of praying transforms us. The very act of praying transforms us and the world, not just the requests that we make. And that means it's not a one and done deal. That you have to keep asking. You have to keep searching. You have to keep knocking. Marjorie Suhaki is a retired professor of theology at the Claremont School of Theology. 
And she has this wonderful little book entitled, In God's Presence, and it's all about prayer. And Marjorie, in one of the chapters, deals with uh, the issue of intercessory prayer. What does it mean when we pray for others or on behalf of others? And I love how she describes how prayer works in our world. Because everything is interdependent. And everything that we do impacts others. This is what she says. She says, when we pray, we become one with those whom we pray for within God's own being. For we meet in God. It's not just that we need to pray, she says. It's that God needs us to do the praying. That our prayers actually make a difference in what happens. And I don't know about you, but I find that helpful because oftentimes in in prayer, as we're learning to pray, we think of it, God being somewhere far off away and distant and as this wish granter as we bring requests to God. But that's not the heart of prayer. We need to think of God as a partner with us in making good happen in the world. And that we do that in the act of praying that helps makes God's reign a reality for us all. I think it's also important to note in this parable what the man is asking for. And it was three loaves of bread. And we have to remember that this bread wasn't for himself. It was for that unexpected guest that had arrived at his home. And that is important because in the Middle East, in both that time and today, hospitality is a paramount practice and value. Tanya and I experienced it when we were in Israel just a few weeks ago. We would uh, be touring during the day and we'd always stop for lunch at a local restaurant with our group and you would sit down and then as soon as you sat down these small plates started to arrive just like magic okay and they would all have different things like hummus and tzatziki and feta cheese and fresh tomatoes and everything else that you can imagine and I was always so hungry I just started digging in and eating and uh You say, oh, that was good. I enjoyed that. And then you turn around, and then more plates would arrive. And it was grilled lamb and chicken and beef and pork, anything that you can imagine. So, yeah, you start eating all of that up, too. And now you're getting pretty full, and you turn around, and the waiters are still bringing out plates of stuff, refilling what they had brought before. And even when you say, okay, I'm sorry, I'm full, I've had enough, they say, really? Here's some more. And that's because the value is that you give your guest more than enough. More than enough. That that hospitality is almost overwhelming, as is God's grace. And I think the Lord's table is like that. That on this World Communion Sunday, when everyone around the world gathers together, at the Lord's table, we have more than enough that it's overflowing. Our worship chairs, Deb Curry and Sherry Etter, put together our table this morning, and you can see it represents that overflowing with all the different types of bread. And Tanya Batson baked the bread that we are going to share with one another in communion today. And then that bread is going to be blessed and shared with our youth at their reset service tonight. And all of that comes together, I believe, to feed us physically and spiritually. And in my mind, at least, I like to think that it was help to come together with the man who went to his friend's house at midnight. That through 
his persistence and perseverance, he got the bread that was needed. And that we too, through our prayer and persistence, God has provided us what we need at this table today. And that if we didn't do that, we wouldn't be fed. In just a moment, you're going to hear Witness with Lori sing uh, a song that prepares us for communion. And at the first service, Tanya sang a piece by uh, Franck called Panis Angelicus. And I want to share just a little bit of that because I think it represents what we're about today. Panis Angelicus in Latin means bread of angels. And here are the couple of lines for that song in English for us to meditate on and think about as we prepare ourselves for this meal. May the bread of angels become bread for mankind. The bread of heaven puts all foreshadowings to an end. O oh, thing miraculous, the body of the Lord will nourish the poor, servile, and humble. Friends, we're blessed. We're blessed in a variety of ways, but today we are blessed that we have the table full, more than enough to be fed, and that the Lord is here to be shared with one another in community as the church and to change the world. Let it be so. Amen. On this day that we give thanks to God, in our gratitude, we always are reminded to return back to God a portion of our gifts. So thank you for your generosity. If you are with us in person today, you're more than welcome to leave your gift in one of the baskets in the narthex as you depart. If you're with us online, you'll see on the screen before you a number of ways that you can give uh, in that way too. Let us gather our hearts together now as witness leads us in this time of the offertory with their communion song.
witness. We come now to the time to join together and prepare this holy meal and to share it with one another and with others around the world. If you are with us online this morning, we invite you at your own home to prepare your own form of bread and cup that you might share with us as we do in the sanctuary this morning. And I'm going to invite all of you who are present to join with us in the communion liturgy. The responses will be before you on the screen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere, everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today, his family and all the world is joining at his holy table. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we now proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. And by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, I remind you that in the United Methodist Church and in this congregation, the table of the Lord is open to all who wish to come. So feel free to partake. And we'll do so in this fashion. We'll ask that those who are helping to serve communion come forward first. Pastor Christy and I will serve them the bread and the juice, which are pre-cut for you today, and individual juice cups. And then we will invite you to come to either of the two stations below with others who will be available to serve on the chancel 
and who cannot come forward, if you'll please raise your hand to indicate to them that you need bread and cup brought to you. If you'll come and take a piece of the bread, then choose your own juice cup. You may take that back to your pew and consume it at the time you wish to do so and place the cup in the small cup holder in the pews before you or dispose of it as you depart this morning from worship. If you desire gluten-free wafers, those are available on this side of the table. Feel free to take one of those instead of the bread. Brothers and sisters, all things are made ready. Let us come and join at the table of the Lord, inviting first those who will serve.
Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for this day, a day when we are called to join together around the world as one in the body of Christ and sharing at the table. May your table be always open to each and every one in need of your grace. Fill us, Lord, both physically and spiritually with this bread and cup and with your love so that we might share it with the world and make your reign a reality. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and let us join together in our closing song. My life is in you, Lord. My strength is in you, Lord. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will praise you.